talk you see on the slide, uh, and I will be uh, presenting simulations of interplanetary coronal mass ejections with uh, internal magnetic field uh, in the inner heliosphere. And this is part of the bigger project that uh, we do, and um, uh, this is this work resulted from collaboration with uh, Slava Merkin from APL and Annie and Sarah from HAO and Angelus and uh, from APL also and uh, Nick uh, So in this talk, I divided my talk into three parts. So in the first part, I will be describing the methodology that we use to model evolution of interplanetary coronal mass ejections in the uh, inner heliosphere. So I'll describe the modeling tools we use and show some of the examples. Uh, so then in the next part of the talk, um, I will be talking about the event study when we applied um, uh, when we applied this uh, this model to to the uh, event and see me. And the objective of this study is to uh, reproduce uh, the observed in situ magnetic field evolution as measured at Earth, uh, not just plasma parameters. Um, and I'll show you, uh, of course, the results. And the uh, third and last part of my talk will be about ens uh, ensemble modeling of uh, many interplanetary coronal mass ejections. And um, I will describe the big project that we do, and I will show you the uh, the results from the first ensemble of 144 uh, CME simulations that uh, we have done. Uh, so uh, we use Gamera Helio model uh, to model the inner heliosphere, and we recently coupled this model with uh, the model that describes um, magnetic structure of the of the CME. So. Gamera code is the reinvention of the uh, Lion Feather Mobari MHD code with high heritage, and all the uh, numerical details of the LFM code uh, of the sorry Gamera code is uh, extensively extensively described in this paper Zheng et al. 2019. Uh, so previous. Uh, LFM uh, helio model has been applied to steady state modeling of the inner heliosphere and time dependent uh, heliosphere, uh, time dependent model of the inner heliosphere, and was also coupled with a uh, coronal model to uh, propagate coronal mass ejection from the uh, corona to the inner heliosphere. Um, so, uh, following LFM helio, now we have Gamera. And uh, we are using Gamera to model steady state uh, inner heliosphere. Uh, we also, right now, we are developing a time dependent model of the inner heliosphere with Gamera. And uh, recently, we coupled Gamera with Gibson Law model to, uh, to model evolution of interplanetary coronal, coronal mass ejections. Uh, so, uh, numerical uh, algorithm of this. Previous code LFM uh, was uh, created in early 90s, and the uh, numerical uh, scheme remains rather unique today. It's uh, characterized by low numerical dissipation, uh, ability to resolve structures within a few cells, and uh, divergence uh, free updates. And this is achieved by high order spatial reconstruction, um, uh, typically seventh or eighth order. Uh, and uh, using constrained transport, and also using arbitrary non-orthogonal grids that can be adapted to the problem that we solve. So uh, LFM code was uh, rebuilt from scratch with uh, two main principles, to retain and uh, improve numerics, and also prepare the code for the next generation of supercomputers. Uh, so Gamera Helio is adaptation of Gamera to uh, modeling the inner heliosphere. And when I say inner heliosphere, I mean the region between uh, 21 solar radii and 1 AU. So this is the region we are, uh, we are modeling. Uh, and Gamera Helio is driven by WSA model of the corona. 
uh, WC uh, uh, and in turn WSA model is driven by ADAPT uh, global photospheric magnetic field maps. And if you want to learn more about Gamera code, you can just Google Gamera MHD and uh, you will see the link where you can learn more. And uh, so here on the right, um, uh, on the uh, on the uh, top plot, you see the simulation of that inner heliosphere. So this ball here, the red ball, uh, is the inner uh, inner boundary. Uh, Any, I'm sorry, do you see my my mouse? I don't. That's okay. Uh, so the red ball shows the inner boundary. Um, of our simulation and it expands to uh, up, uh, until one one AU. And uh, on the lower plot, uh, this is uh, one of the very recent high resolution simulation um, that resolves mesoscale structures in the inner heliosphere. Uh, so we model the propagation and uh, evolution of the interplanetary coronal mass ejection using uh, the coupled models, Gamera Helio and uh, Gibson Lowe. And here I'm showing the schematically how we do this coupling. So first we simulate the uh, global solar wind background with Gamera Helio code driven by semi-empirical uh, WSA model. Uh, and here uh, in the middle top, I'm showing the example of, uh, of such simulation. So this is the ecliptic and the uh, meridional cuts of the three-dimensional three solution. So um, even with the relatively low resolution used for this simulation, we resolve uh, structures in the solar wind, such as fast and slow uh, streams. Uh, so then once we uh, got the steady state solution of the inner heliosphere, uh, we emerge the coronal mass ejection with the uh, internal magnetic structure, which, which is described by this Gibson Low um, uh, and Gibson Low model. So parameters for this uh, for the CME is constrained from the uh, imaging data, uh, white light images, such as uh, width and speed, and um, and then, the, so the plot on the right shows the result of the coupling of the two models. So this is the example of this complex magnetic structure of the CME. And um, uh, so again, this uh, sphere here is the inner boundary of Gamera simulation. And through the inner boundary, we merge this um, uh, magnetic bubble with the twisted magnetic field lines and they merge through the boundary and then propagates in the, in the solar wind. Uh, so. so how do, uh, so I would like to talk a little bit more in details about the boundary conditions that we, uh, that we set and hopefully will be somewhat interesting for people who do simulations. Uh, so how do we emerge the bubble with complex twisted magnetic field lines into the heliospheric domain where large scale magnetic field predominantly radial with um, some azimutal component due to the um, rotation of the, of the sun. So we do this by applying the boundary conditions uh, in a proper way. So we have our inner boundary um, of Gamera, 21.5 uh, solar radii. So this is the inner boundary, uh, latitude and longitude. And we have our analytical solution for this expanding um, Gibson Low uh, magnetic bubble that we want to emerge through our inner boundary. So at, as it, at every moment of time, we know the, uh, the area, uh, which is marked by the yellow circle, when this magnetic bubble crosses our inner boundary in, in the um, uh, uh, inner boundary of, of uh, Gamera simulation. And so we specify boundary conditions depending whether we are inside this area or outside. So outside, this is background solar wind. Inside this area, this is where our magnetic bubble is emerging. And um, in a mathematical form, here I'm showing that if your numerical cell is within this, um, within this uh, uh, area marked uh, sigma, then for density and temperature, we take um, uh, values from Gibson Low model, or we can specify values in the way we want. 
for the uh, speed of the solar wind, we add uh, background speed and Gibson low speed, uh, Gibson low radial speed. Uh, so the radial magnetic field is evolved by explicitly applying electric fields at the cell edges calculated from Gibson low model. And I'll talk a little bit more on this on the next slide. And the components of the magnetic field tangential to the surface um, is taken from uh, Gibson low model. And if we are outside of this area, we apply boundary conditions for our background, uh, background solar wind. <clears throat> okay, so, and uh, again, as I said, to uh, evolve the radial magnetic field, uh, we need to apply electric field at the edges of our cell. So this, these are uh, four layers of our ghost cells. And so this yellow, um, yellow square is actually the inner boundary of our domain. So to evolve the radial magnetic field, we need to apply electric fields at the edges of our cells and we calculate them um, based on the uh, components of the field tangential to the surface that we take from the analytical Gibson Lowe solution. Okay, so, um, this model is the analytical three-dimensional MHD model that describes self-similar expansion of the magnetic spheromat and it allows to consider different magnetic topologies of a spheromat by applying a different level of stretching parameter and uh, any um, any Malanushenka did a very nice work to determine uh, a set of parameters that define the Gibson law magnetic uh, magnetic structure so these are the the uh, opening angle the uh, parameter uh, that we call top morph that uh, defines the magnetic topology uh, of the bubble, the magnetic flux, the orientation of the bubble around the sun earth line, um, the position in terms of longitude, uh, longitude and latitude and velocity, how fast uh, it expands. Um, so the three examples of different topologies uh, resulting from different stretching of the spheromark are shown here. So um, detached spheromark, tether to the origin spheromag and tether flux rope. So the larger the stretching results in a larger portion of the spheromag eliminated to zero. And the plots in the bottom show the solutions of Gamera simulations when we merge uh, these corresponding magnetic structures through the inner boundary into the, uh, into the solar wind. So we have to remember that in the Gibson Law model, the solution of a self-similar expanding spheromag was obtained for certain assumption for the uh, magnetic field outside of this bubble. That's radial, simple radial magnetic field. So once we merge the um, this bubble into uh, backgrounds, uh, uh, into the uh, arbitrary background in the Gamera uh, in the Gamera solution, the magnetic structure would be different and will not be consistent with the self-similar uh, expanding. So uh, you can see that um, internal magnetic field lines in the bubble become connected to the field lines outside of the bubble to the uh, heliospheric magnetic field lines uh, and uh, the bubble become more distorted and in some cases we also saw the um, rotation of this magnetic structure as it um, emerges into this in, into the solar wind and all of this is the result of the interaction of this bubble with the uh, arbitrary some some arbitrary uh, solar wind background okay so now I'm moving to the uh, second part of my talk uh, which is about uh, event study so we applied this coupled um, coupled models Gamera and Gibson Lowe to uh, look at the specific event, uh, the specific CME, uh, April 5th, 2010, this was ge geoeffective CME. And uh, the objective of this study is to constrain the parameters of this magnetic bubble uh, close to the sun, close to uh, at 20, 20 RS, uh, and uh, model this model the evolution propagation of this bubble uh, until one EU 
and then uh, reproduce the time evolution of magnetic field components um, at, at 1 AU. Uh, so this is the uh, CME that was well observed by uh, different spacecraft, Zero A, B, and uh, Soho Lasco. And so uh, a number of uh, parameters are known for this CME. Um, the CME uh, went off from the latitude uh, about 16 to 27 uh, degrees to the south. The CME velocity was 800 kilometers per second. The opening angle is about uh, 45 degrees. Uh, however, this is the tricky CME uh, because the orientation of the flux rope uh, near the sun, um, based on the analysis of the images, uh, was not uniquely defined. For example, uh, the analysis showed that um, uh, in the corona, the orientation uh, looks more like it was north-south, north and then um, at larger distances uh, in the corona, it looks more like uh, east-west. So the orientation is not uh, known. Uh, so in our model, we have additional parameters such as um, magnetic field topology uh, in CME, uh, magnetic flux, uh, and also orientation, which is not uh, which was not defined. So these are parameters that uh, we don't know. So we approach the, the approach that we took is that we looked but to determine the topology, we looked at the time evolution um, of magnetic field components at 1 AU. Uh, and um, so other parameters, we just took several uh, values and we ran many simulations and then compare, uh, uh, looked at the evolution uh, of um, MHD variables uh, at 1 AU. So the topology was defined from in situ behavior of the magnetic field. So this is the uh, in situ data of the CME. Uh, so again, the um, topology is defined by observed time evolution of all three magnetic field components. So we, uh, if we look at this uh, two upper plots. So this black line shows the magnetic field um, magnitude. The red is uh, the X component in the GSE system of coordinates, and green is uh, the Y component. And so this plot, the second from, uh, from the top, shows the uh, BZ. So this is not the classical flux rope, and there were two uh, regions uh, defined here. Uh, when B, when magnetic field rotates, and uh, magnetic field magnitude declines, and then the second region, when a magnetic field does not rotate and B stays constant. Um, this CME is characterized by um, long duration of the negative BZ. Uh, so if you look at the, um, at the sign of the, of the um, how the, the sign changes uh, for the magnetic field components, BX and BZ components rotated, uh, while BY always stays the same. Um, the same sign. And uh, also the analysis of this in, in situ measurements, uh, it was found that sampled CME magnetic, uh, the, this CME magnetic field is not consistent with um, clear helical magnetic field uh, structure. So from Gibson law model, we know how magnetic field behaves in different configurations um, through different uh, li lines as we um, pierce the uh, CME. So we can choose, based, based on uh, this and see the data, we can try to choose the appropriate um, uh, topology. So again, the goal uh, in this event study is to reproduce the rotation of the field and uh, not matching uh, the magnitudes. So first we simulated the solar wind uh, background and on these plot, two plots on the right, it uh, shows the uh, steady state solution for the inner heliosphere. Uh, so the color shows the velocity. Um, so th the simulation was performed with a resolution 256, 128 to 56. Um, and here on the, uh, again, so 
This steady state solution corresponds to Carrington rotation 2095, and this corresponds to around March, April uh, 2010. Uh, so the topology that we used, uh, that we chose by um, looking at this uh, evolution of in situ uh, data on magnetic field components is the so-called tethered, uh, tethered flux cell. Uh, so next we looked at two uh, directions of CME propagation. Uh, so the yellow, uh, yellow arrow shows the um, direction of a CME and the ecliptic plane and the white yellow shows the observed, uh, uh, the observed CME direction. Um, so, so once we did the background solving, we compared with the observations. So this is uh, one of the comparison I'm showing here for the velocity. Uh, so Gamera solution is the blue and um, uh, uh, the measurements is, is the red curve. And you see that just with the background solar wind, uh, we of course not capturing this CME um, here. And so, so this is the simulation. You can see the uh, emergence of this um, flux rope into our inner boundary. And in fact, the chosen region uh, of uh, negative BZ as it goes through uh, through one AU, uh, and so the temporal evolution in all three B components at Earth uh, in this solution were consistent with in situ observations. And again, remember I'm showing here the uh, simulation when CME went in ecliptic, and this is somewhat different from the direction, uh, the observed direction when CME was actually about. Uh, 16, 27 degrees to, to the south. Uh, so in this case, it goes uh, in the ecliptic plane. Uh, so the, this negative BZ shown in blue uh, inside the structure is actually produced by the poloidal, um, uh, poloidal component of the magnetic field in the Gibson Low model. Um, and the flux rope orientation in, the, in, in this simulation is uh, east-west. It gives the best uh, match to the in situ, um, in situ uh, measure, in situ data on B components. Uh, so uh, here we are looking at the um, at the uh, uh, different para uh, different MHD variables in equatorial plane. Uh, so we are looking top down. This is the radial velocity. This is uh, density, uh, magnetic field. Um, magnetic field magnitude, and then in the bottom three components of the magnetic field, the uh, BZ component, uh, this is VR component, and, uh, and B5 component. Uh, so this, this negative BZ region, as I said, is produced by, the, uh, by this poloidal magnetic field lines in the Gibson Low model, which is shown here by blue color. On the left. Uh, so if we look at VR, these two regions, uh, bluish and pinkish, these are the flux rope, uh, flux rope legs. Okay, and uh, so here the plots on the left is the uh, simulated um, so-called uh, synthetic in situ data from these simulations, uh, the velocity density, temperature, uh, and uh, magnetic field components. Uh, so, and if we compare the time profiles of magnetic field components and magnetic field um, uh, strength with what was observed, we will see the time evolution of B components is consistent with in situ observations in terms of uh, that uh, BZ rotates from positive to negative, BX. Uh, component rotates from negative to positive and by always uh, by sign does not change however in this simulation cme was said to propagate an ecliptic plane uh, while in uh, observed direction was to the south so then we uh, modeled uh, cme same cme but we changed the direction of cme propagation 
And we, uh, so in this case, when scene interaction is close to what was observed in white light images, uh, we uh, only reproduce the time evolution of BY and BZ components at 1 AU. BX is um, similar to the data, but qualitatively different than previous case. Actually, uh, uh, just, just the way how it changes sign, it's, it's different from the previous case. And also in this case, it's uh, interesting to see that the CME was interacting because it went um, to larger latitudes in the south. It interacted with the uh, heliospheric current sheet and producing some, some interesting structure here. And this is just to give you a summary of the event study. So um, uh, we coupled Gamera Helio uh, and uh, Gibson Low CME models uh, to study evolution of the CMEs in the solving background in uh, statistical fashion. I'll talk more uh, about this in the next uh, part of my talk. Uh, as I showed you, the evolution of Gibson Low uh, flux rope in some arbitrary interplanetary background is not self similar as in the Gibson Low model because of the interaction with this, uh, with this background. The basic structure of the uh, Gibson low flux rope is preserved during the propagation through the heliosphere, although it really depends on um, where, you, where we emerge the CME. And um, so due to interaction with the interplanetary field, uh, the flux rope becomes distorted and field lines uh, become connected with the uh, field lines of the ambient field. Uh, we modeled this specific CMA event and uh, we found uh, a magnetic field topology which produced the rotation of magnetic field consistent with in situ observations at 1 EU. Uh, and as I showed you, I showed you two cases. Uh, in one case, when direction of the CME uh, was an ecliptic plane. We got um, uh, behavior of the magnetic field at 1 AU consistent with observations. And in another case, when um, direction of the CME uh, agreed more with white light images, uh, we only reproduced two B components at 1 AU um, and BX. Uh, we could not reproduce BX uh, evolution at 1 AU. And uh, now let me move to the uh, next, uh, to the last part of my talk, uh, when I will be talking about uh, ensemble modeling of uh, interplanetary coronal mass ejections. Uh, so uh, we use the statistical approach to understand the interaction between uh, interplanetary coronal mass ejections with the uh, ambient solar wind structures and also to develop probabilistic forecast methods. And this is the um, big four-year project uh, with Doikman project, uh, Sarah Gibson SPI. Uh, this project incorporates um, uh, observational data, the solar coronal heliospheric and, uh, imaging, and also in situ data uh, near Earth. And uh, we also use models that I uh, described, the Gibson Low model for uh, that describes the magnetic structure of the CME and Gamera um, to model uh, uh, solar wind background, Gamera is driven by WSA uh, model, and we coupled CME model and in a heliosphere model. Uh, so models are driven by input parameters, right? In our case, uh, we can set the WSA solution that drives the solar wind background, and also um, other set of, uh, another set of parameters is for CME, such as uh, opening angle and, velo uh, and, and speed and uh, magnetic topology and so on. Uh, so we assume some distribution for these input parameters, right? So, and using, in this project, using Bayesian statistical analysis, uh, we will track the uncertainty in the distributions of model parameters, and we will obtain the posterior predictive distribution, uh, which would be conditional on this observational data that we use. And this is a massive uh, 
problem, minimization problem in multi-dimensional space of uh, input model parameters that requires uh, many MHD model runs. And uh, the computational uh, requirements for ensemble of simulations, and we plan to do uh, 54,000 MHD runs, um, an example that uh, examples I showed you before. And to do all these runs, we uh, need about 10 million core hours. And we require uh, to, to, to store our model output, we require about 100 terabyte of disk space. Uh, yes, and uh, this shows uh, the schematics of the uh, Bayesian statistical analysis that uh, we will do. So um, I was talking a lot about this uh, CME input parameters that we have in our coupled models. So suppose you have one input parameter, such as CME uh, radial velocity, and one output parameter from the model. Let's say we, um, we will look at the storm duration. Uh, now suppose that the input parameter we can um, describe by some distribution uh, with chosen parameters mu and sigma, and then uh, take a few values from this distribution. And for each value, we perform the Gamera MHD run. And then in each run, we have some output that we're interested in, which is storm duration. So as a result, we obtain the resulting distribution of output values, which is also characterized by um, its sigma, but also because we incorporate the uh, observations, we know what this distribution of output, output parameters uh, should be, right? So we have this mu and sigma from observations. So the goal is to find uh, the, the input distribution that will give us the result of output distribution close to what we know from observations. And uh, again, this is a minim minimization problem for um, mu, and, in mu and sigma space, and um, it's... Um, um, one evaluation in that space takes many MHD uh, runs, and we will use the ROM algorithm to, um, to optimize this process. But anyways, uh, we have many input parameters in the model. For each of them, we have distribution, so it uh, requires a lot of MHD runs that we will do. Uh, and this table lists the parameters. So this is... Uh, uh, grid of input parameters for our 54,000 uh, MHD simulations. Uh, so we will consider four different solar wind backgrounds uh, in the uh, inner hemisphere that corresponds to solar minimum, rising phase, solar maximum, and declining phase. Uh, we will look at different uh, CME directions, uh, also for angular width, We'll be looking at different uh, CMEs with different width. Uh, so for the topology, that's most interesting, uh, we will be looking at different values of the topology that creates uh, different uh, morphologies of the magnetic field inside, inside this bubble. Uh, also, we'll look at different orientations around the Sun-Earth um, line, uh, different CME velocities, and uh, different magnitudes of the uh, magne magnetic field in the flux rope. Uh, so we uh, defined the data products that will be produced from our uh, MHD simulations, and uh, we tested them uh, for the subset uh, for the smaller ensemble. Uh, so we will be saving data at one AU sphere. Um, all eight MHD variables uh, with high cadence, about two minutes. We'll be uh, saving three-dimensional density from uh, Gamera simulation uh, uh, to produce the synthetic white light images. And we will be saving, uh, saving eight MHD variables along, um, along a few uh, sun-to-earth lines through the, uh, going through the CME. And on the right here, you see uh, the example uh, 
of these data outputs. So the top plot shows uh, the uh, shell at 1AU. So here I'm showing BR uh, versus uh, on latitude longitude map. And this circle here is the actually uh, where CME is going um, through the 1AU sphere. So on the middle, I'm showing the white light image that was produced from Gamera simulation. So you, you see the um, yeah, CME feature here. And on the bottom is the uh, sun earth line where CME uh, go, that goes through the propagating CME. Um, I'm showing the magnetic field uh, magnitude here. So this is from uh, 21 solar radii to 1 AU. And um, so we started to do, we started with a uh, small ensemble and uh, the grid of input parameters here is uh, shown, uh, the parameters that we use here shown uh, in red uh, values. Uh, so for the solar wind background, we use the, um, uh, to model solar wind background, we use the WSA map uh, for the rising phase uh, of the solar cycle. So uh, while most of these parameters, you can kind of intuitively understand what they mean, uh, the most tricky is the uh, top morph parameter. And again, uh, Annie did a very nice uh, work to connect this top morph parameter with the magnetic uh, structure in, in, inside the bubble. Um, so I'm showing here the uh, structures, how the magnetic field inside CME looks like for these different top morph parameters. So this is the view uh, as we look from the top down and the bubble is oriented uh, in the ecliptic plane. So the top morph uh, equal four, yeah, this is the spheromark, the top morph uh, equals 3.75. Uh, um, it has uh, please, uh, it has three families of magnetic field lines inside. It's a spheromark and flux rope and arcade. We call it tethered spheromark. Then top morph 2.5 uh, has two families of magnetic fields, uh, field lines inside a flux rope and arcade. And finally, the top morph 1.75 uh, is the um, uh, arcade. So, uh, so in all these 144 simulations, uh, CMEs are launched in ecliptic plane, say, and same longitude uh, for all the runs. So now, to give you an idea of uh, Gamera MHT solutions that are produced by different uh, Gibson Low input parameters. I'll show you the comparison between different uh, sets of parameters that differ by only one chosen parameter. For example, um, let's look at different solutions uh, where all input parameters are the same except, except the top morph uh, parameter. Uh, so to demonstrate solutions with different top morph parameters, it's most convenient to show BR in the slice through the magnetic uh, magnetic structure. So magnetic structure is oriented perpendicular to the ecliptic and sliced by the ecliptic. It uh, takes a little bit of your imagination here to uh, connect um, the Gibson Low structures and um, uh, their snapshots uh, from Gamera simulations. So because as we go from lower top of value to higher top of value, um, we expect that a BR pattern would change from kind of, um, as it appears here, from two sector region. By sectors, I mean that you have kind of bluish side inside the CME and pinkish side, so the two kind of sectors. As you go from lower top, uh, top of value, from left to right, you would see um, from two sectors, you would develop kind of into four sectors. For example, here, the four sectors just start appearing, you can see I kind of divide it into four, so blue, pink, um, pink and blue, and then it's more developed as you go to uh, a larger uh, top of value. And this is purely uh, a result of the, um, of this magnetic field structure that coming from the Gibson Law uh, model. Um, so, as you, as if you look at these last two cases for top morph 3.75 and top morph 4, they're very similar. But in fact, for this last case, 
you see that this blue region, which is uh, positive BR, is not connected to the inner boundary. And this is because for this structure of the Gibson law, it's, uh, it's not connected to our boundary. It's not, um, it's not connected to the origin in uh, basically to the sun. It's, it, it, it leaves our inner boundary. So this is the difference between the two. While they look, um, the first look, they look similar. Uh, of course, in, in this case, we merged uh, Gibson Low magnetic semi into the quiet and relatively homogeneous um, solar wind region uh, in the background. If it was the region with different streams, it would be uh, really hard to do this matching between um, Gamera results and uh, uh, magnetic structure uh, in, the, in the Gibson Low model. Uh, so now let's look at the effect of the uh, CME speed on the magnetic structure. So we are comparing here two cases uh, for the slower CME, 300 kilometers per second. So this is this set of plots here on the left. And for the faster CME, 900 kilometers per second. Um, so for the effect here that I would like to, um, uh, to show you is that for uh, faster speed, the magnetic structure becomes more squished in the radial direction. This is kind of uh, that one would expect. And this is what we see here in the comparison uh, of these uh, two cases. So um, again, uh, to kind of guide you a little more in details, uh, kind of convince you that this is the structure, is, is, the, uh, uh, is, is this magnetic structure, but squished. Um, so, the uh, Gibson structure is merging through the inner boundary and it's oriented perpendicular to the ecliptic plane. If we cut it through by the ecliptic plane, you'll see that the uh, BZ field is created by this um, uh, by the score by the score field, the, the blue. Um, and I kind of drew this line just to give you an idea. And if you compare the oops, um, this this plot here and this plot here, you will see that um, in the faster scene, it really squishes the whole structure, and it is also seen in in B phi um, in B phi components. <clears throat> and uh, here I'm showing a comparison of two scenes for a different angular width, for 60 degrees and 90 degrees, and uh, as you can see, that uh, something that I mentioned before, uh, the larger the width of the CME, um, it is likely that we um, we would see the interaction of the CME with uh, solar wind streams, and that creates this very uh, irregular and distorted CME front, uh, CME shock, and CME sheath. Uh, and uh, also, you can see if you look at BR here, you can see that uh, such process, uh, such interaction would produce the smaller scale, uh, uh, smaller scale current sheets um, around, around the CME. And note that even with relatively modest uh, resolution in Gamera, and here it's uh, 256 cells in R direction, 128 in phi, and uh, 128 in theta, and 256 in the phi, uh, we're able to resolve these uh, distortions and wrinkles at the CME front. Uh, now let's uh, look at the uh, whole ensemble of runs, and uh, this is an ongoing work. Uh, so for the ensemble of sim uh, MHD simulations, we obtain uh, synthetic in situ measurements at 1 AU and the white light images of CME. So uh, here we, uh, and we can plot distributions of this, uh, of, of different characteristics. So here I'm plotting the distributions of uh, south, southward BZ at 1 AU uh, for different uh, input parameters, right? So this is the, the plot, uh, the plots on the top is um, distributions for Gibson low top morph, uh, different values for Gibson low top morph parameter then um, parameter that uh, defines the magnitude of the flux rope magnetic field. And then on the bottom is orientation angle, uh, flux rope uh, opening angle and CME speed. 
Uh, so you can see that it is likely uh, that we get a, la a larger uh, southward BZ uh, for uh, higher top morph. So this, these are the uh, top morph values that um, produce the spheromac and uh, um, uh, also for larger magnetic fields. Uh, magnitudes in the in the flux row, which is kind of expected, and uh, larger orientation, and uh, and also for the faster CME speed. Uh, we are uh, looking at these distributions, and we are also working on um, um, other distributions, such as uh, such as uh, distribution of duration of storms uh, for different input parameters. Uh, uh, so. Yes, also, uh, this is also the ongoing work. We are producing the white light images from um, gamma ray simulations of uh, CMEs and calculating uh, CME uh, size and CME uh, speed and compare those distributions with, with what was actually observed over many events. And uh, this is just a quick summary of this um, part about the ensemble of runs. So with the goal to perform uh, 54,000 interplanetary CME MHD simulations for statistical analysis, we defined a grid of input CME parameters. We defined the data output uh, we need for statistical study um, and developed all the necessary scripts to enable simultaneous submission of many um, Gamera Gibson low runs. And we performed the simulations on uh, Cheyenne supercomputer. Um, we have done initial ensemble of uh, 144 simulations. And um, currently we are uh, looking at distributions of different parameters that we obtain. Uh, we looked at the distribution of Southward BZ that showed that faster CMEs with spheromac like magnetic topologies oriented perpendicular to the ecliptic plane would likely produce a uh, larger southward BZ value. And also we're uh, looking to do analysis of semi characteristics from synthetic white light images. And I think this is a, my last slide and uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much Elena for the talk and uh, this this is an impressive work, even if I say so myself, being involved in it. Well, but, thank you very much, Annie, for your part. <laughs> I, you. I'm, I'm very excited to see where the big research takes us. And uh, right now it's time for questions. And we actually have got two first questions already in the chat. So Enrico is asking, could you elaborate on how the number of 54,000 simulations was estimated, whether just the number of points in the multidimensional input space? And also on slide 20, the approach described looks like something different from a standard Markov chain Monte Carlo approach. Okay, so to talk about the, uh, so for the first question, I'm ready to answer. For the second question, I don't feel competent. So maybe any, you have some insight into this, but let's uh, first talk about the first um, question. So yeah, this is the uh, space of input parameters that uh, gives this number, 54,000 MHD simulations. Um, basically, four different solar wind backgrounds, um, four CME directions, uh, and we consider uh, to look at more directions, but it will uh, depend on um, if we get can get some more time, computational time. Uh, four values for CME angular width, um, six values for the top morph parameter that defines the magnetic topology. Um, how many? Seven here for orientation, uh, four numbers for CME velocity, and five numbers for um, magnetic field to, to control the ma magnetic field strength in, in the flux rope. So if we just multiply all this, there will be this big number of uh, MHD simul uh, simulations needed. And uh, for the for this gen, uh, general kind of um, analysis that will be done, I'm um, I don't 
participate actively in this part of the project so it would be difficult for me to answer that question so maybe any you have any um, insight uh, to my embarrassment i uh, i did not uh i did not well know what uh i'm not extremely familiar with markov chain monte carlo and with ensemble modeling so maybe uh I wonder if Slava or Sarah are around and uh, if they can answer. I seem to remember that this is different from ensemble modeling. Okay. Well, I, I'm here, but I cannot answer it. I think this is the work that uh, uh, Dagnishka and um, uh, what's our what's our friend and friend's uh, name? Is Kevin. Uh, Kevin. Kevin. Yes. Dalmas. Kevin yeah. Dalmas. Yeah. But yeah, so so I guess the answer is uh, this: uh, we're we're using Bayesian and statistics, and we're basically trying to use the distributions of posterior to figure out the distributions of the um, of the input parameters. But uh, yes, how, uh, as for how does it compare to the Markov chain Monte Carlo? I guess we're not very yeah we're not very ready to answer this moment. Oh, so uh, Enrico, quick follow-up. So the 54,000 rounds are just for one CME event case, case study? Um, no, this is, uh, there is, uh, there is no goal to model one particular CME with this number of simulations. Uh, we need this many uh, runs to, to, um, to facilitate facilitate this statistical analysis that our uh, other collaborators will be doing. But, so, but uh, you know, this is still one event, right? It's I, one event with different parameters. About particular events, because so you you have a number of input parameters, right? For each of the parameter, you have hypothetical distribution and you take values from those distributions for each of the parameter right and this is what defines this grid of input parameters then we do all these simulations and we are looking at uh, for example we want to look at the storm duration right we look at distribution of storm durations and compare to observations so it's not uh, to model the particular event it's to obtain the distributions of uh, some uh, parameters that we're interested, observed parameters. But there is also part of the project on, on the um, doing uh, uh, forecasting for, for, for the particular events, but I think it's, uh, it's kind of next stage. <clears throat> Thank you. So, uh, are there more questions? Well, I guess if not, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Elena, again for the talk. And well, yeah, thank you, Annie. And yeah.